So this conversation is important because you have and this, and I think we should put people in proper categories here, and that would be when you talk about the cause of justice for the preborn and actually protecting all humans from conception, you have to ask the question, okay, what are the different perspectives? And you'll oftentimes hear us talking here at, at church, you'll, you'll see me speaking across the country on this issue. I'm very specific when I refer to the problem. Um, you'll hear me saying often, the pro-life industry, you hear me saying that a lot, right? When I'm not speaking about pro-life Christians, right? Believers who are pro-life, they that's that's a biblical that's a biblical term for life. That's not unbiblical, right? It's not wrong to say I am for life. This is for death, yeah. that's for life. That's not a bad thing. So I'm very careful to distinguish between the typical Christian in the pew who believes that the big A word is murder who believes that it needs to end immediately and wants to see it ended immediately. Typically, uh, the, the, the average pro-life Christian just has the operating assumption that big industry over there holds to my perspective. Therefore, life, I mean, they're, sit, they're over there saying that life begins mm -hmm. at conception, so all human life begins at conception. And I guess they're trying to end it, right? So they're sending money to these organizations and everything else. So I'm making a distinction between the pro-life industry, this machine, and the average pro-life person on in the pew, okay? So what we try to go after in terms of critique, um, prophetically speak against, be a witness against, is the pro-life industry. And somebody might say, why? Why would, you, why would you speak against the industry that is taking money and trying to fight these battles? And the answer is because worldview, because there's no neutrality. Yeah. Because the approach of the pro-life industry, and we have, I... I Documentable, it, uh, yeah. documentable. Uh, they're with their own mouths. The leadership of National Right to Life and these other organizations, specifically saying that they are not Christian organizations. They're proud of that. Believe it or not, they're proud of that. That they're not explicitly Christian organizations. That they're not fighting this battle from the perspective of the Word of God at their feet as the ultimate reference point for this fight. They try to say that they're fighting this from a biological perspective, first and foremost, and even then they're being inconsistent because if biologically it's human from conception, then why aren't you acting like it? Why aren't you fighting like that's true? But we've also tried to call down the inconsistency in the pro-life industry, and this is across the board. You'll see it everywhere. Are there stragglers here or there? Yes, but this is the consistent theme from the national organizations, even down to the subsidiaries, the state-level ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is this, that anybody who engages in this practice of abortion, I want you guys to remember this, this is very important, very important. I already said the word. I'm trying not to say the word so we don't get censored and suppressed, but th this is really important. Um, the abortionists aren't the ones running around the street, standing on street corners, looking for babies to kill. Yeah, they Rem have a clientele. Remember yeah. that. <laughs> the abortionists are not driving around in neighborhoods right. looking around for children to kill. People, being mothers and fathers, are bringing their children to the abortionist. Mm -hmm as sacrifices, mm -hmm. okay? So keep that in mind. The abortionist is not going around neighborhoods going to find children to kill. It is mothers and fathers who are bringing them to the abortionist. The pro-life industry has had the mindset, the worldview, the perspective that the mother and the father, and they'll emphasize the mother, who actually engage in this issue of abortion, bring their own child, their own offspring, to the abortionists to be slaughtered, they themselves are victims. Now, if I had one thing to say to my brother, Doug, um, and I, he would be fully on board with us here, so don't hear me wrong on this. He would be fully aboard uh, on the law of God that says that um, he who acquits the guilty and, you know, um, and uh, condemns, condemns the, the righteous the innocent, is, is the innocent, is uh, they're both are alike an abomination to the Lord. So Doug would be full in, fully in agreement here. So this is what I mean in terms of a blind spot. This is really, really important. Um, the pro-life industry, the fatal flaw is they say that the mother is herself a victim mm -hmm. like the baby, right. which means when you see the pro-life industry fighting nationally or at the state level or at a city level, against the issue of abortion, we say they're never going to end abortion. They won't. They won't. Why? Because they say the woman herself is a victim. Okay? 
which means there will never be criminalization that actually is honoring to God, glorifying to God, consistent and not partial with their perspective. In other words, they are failed from the start. They will always fail until they have repentance and a change of worldview, a, a, a different perspective on the law of God. Key issue, don't, don't miss me here on this, very important. The fatal flaw of the pro-life industry is that they acquit the guilty. They say that the mother is herself a victim, which means with their perspective, no matter how much money you throw at them, they're never gonna criminalize abortion in a way that's honoring, glorifying to God. Why? Because the perpetrators of the crime some will be seen as victims themselves. Now, of course, the average pro-life industry leader will say, well, we definitely want the abortionist punished. Like if, if he if he continues to do abortions, we want him, him he's guilty of right. some crime. They won't even, some of them won't even say murder. Uh, Tony Lowinger was fearful of even saying that the abortionist is guilty of murder himself. And he's the vice president of National Right to Life for some time and president of Oklahomans for Life. But that's the pro-life establishment, the ones who are fighting all the battles, right? Who say we need to overturn Roe. And then that gets to this next point where also they fail and where God hates what they're doing. I will say it. He hates it. Mm -hmm is they actually put forward bills that show unequal weights and measures. Mm -hmm. They should they yeah. put bills in that are partial. Now, this is very, very important. Very. Yeah. I read at the beginning of the show this key issue, and Doug again would agree with this. Proverbs 20, 23, unequal weights are an abomination to the Lord. So partiality, those unequal weights, are an abomination to God. Same thing that we see in scripture regarding certain sexual behaviors. And I don't want this to get shadow banned and I want everyone to hear it. So I'll just, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. At that. The word is abomination. So we love to pick on certain sexual ethics to say that's an abomination. God's very clear about that. But so is this, unequal weights and measures. And we have to ask the question, if the pro-life um, industry puts forward bills that are actually unequal weights and measures and they show partiality is that an abomination to god is it an abomination to god to put a bill in that says treat these humans this way and treat these ones this way in terms of the death penalty because that's what we're talking about with abortion is the death penalty like yeah. for an example an example would be good in our state when they killed our Bill of Equal Protection, the pro-life establishment put in the bill that decriminalized abortion. So they decriminalized abortion in the state of Arizona. Congratulations, pro-life industry. What'd you do with all that money? The next thing they did <laughs> is they actually said, um, you can kill a child in Arizona, but not for the express reason that it has a genetic abnormality. Okay, so what's that mean? Is that equal weights and measures? Or is it unequal? Because what you're saying in Arizona is kill the healthy kids. You can do that. And this is written by the pro-life industry, by the way. Congratulations. What'd you do with all that money? The next thing is they said, well, you can't kill them for the express purpose or reason that they had a genetic abnormality. So just ask the question, okay, how do I get around that bill? Easy. Mom and dad comes in, says, uh, doctor, uh, baby has Down syndrome. Doctor goes, well, you can't kill it because it has Down syndrome. And they go, nah, we just hate it. That's not why. We love Down syndrome. We just hate this kid. Yeah. Great. And they kill the kid. It's told it's a, it, it didn't matter anyways. You get around a piece of cake. It's total waste of money, total waste of funds, and it's unrighteous. Yeah, it is unjust, unjust and evil, but it's partial. Same thing with a heartbeat bill. Is a heartbeat bill equal weights and measures for all humans? And the answer is no. no. Because what you're saying is what makes you um human is a heartbeat. Human is a heartbeat. <laughs> you have to earn that. It's you a working heart. Personhood. Yeah. Tell that to the people in the cardiovascular uh, center in the hospital, right? This is what the law of word of God says. You, this is an abomination to God. You, How can you as a Christian say, I will support something that it is that God calls an abomination, that he calls an abomination for pragmatism? Yeah. What we're arguing for is not pragmatism, but prophetic ministry. Not pragmatism, but prophetic. Principle. That's principle. That's yeah. what we're working for. So um, they acquit the guilty, and they uphold unequal weights and measures. And then the question is also, is what's written by them a righteous decree, or is it an iniquitous decree? Is it sinful at its core? And the answer is, when you look at all these bills, heartbeat bills, pain-capable, any of those bills, it's iniquitous. 
Because what does it do? It affirms the right to kill these humans, but only under these conditions. It's iniquitous. In Isaiah chapter 10, God says, woe to those who write these iniquitous decrees, who make the fatherless pray. These bills literally fall into that category of an iniquitous decree. It's sinful to its core. It's unrighteous. It's unequal weights and measures. It acquits the guilty. And it makes the uh, fatherless children pray. And that's mm -hmm. what these children killed yeah. in abortion are. Fatherless children. They really are abandoned by their dads. The next category I want to address is someone like uh, our brother Doug. And he's not in that category of of um of saying yeah i want to adopt their principles and their standards right like doug would affirm everything i just said mm -hmm. in terms of yeah that's sinful that's wrong can't do that the problem is is i believe doug has a blind spot in this area where he he would call himself a smash mouth incrementalist yeah. here's the problem and i would say this again with love and 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 respect and honor to my brother smash mouth incrementalism is not different than regular old run of the mill incrementalism in the pro life industry. It's been it's been said a distinction without a difference. Yeah, it's really. the same. Yeah, it it really is the same because it's essentially flood the flood it like yeah. let's do everything. Yeah, let's Doug, overwhelm. Doug it. Yeah. has has said like smash mouth incrementalism is like there's a heartbeat bill that would save some lives. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and affirm the heartbeat bill, but I'm going to do it with a statement that says I'm not done. I'm going to keep going just so you know. I don't really accept this, but we're going to keep going later. Well, listen to Klusendor for anybody else who's who's a incrementalist with the establishment. And Doug, they say exactly the same thing. Mm. Like they don't say heartbeat bill. We're done. Yay. Hooray. It's over. They say we're not finished. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep speaking and saying we don't fully accept this. So smash mouth incrementalism. Um, I, I just a, a distinction without a difference. It doesn't it's not different than what something like someone like Klusendor or any others would say and have said for many, many years. But watch this, push, 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 push back to the worldview issue. And you can say, I'm not satisfied with the 10 week ban. I'm not satisfied with the heartbeat ban, da, 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 da. You're gonna finally land on this. Here's where you're gonna land. The pro-life industry says, we're not ex explicitly Christian. We're not using the Bible as our guide. We're not using that law word of God. And we believe that mothers are victims themselves. So watch. Push and push and push and push and push. 10 week, nine week, eight week, heartbeat. Guess where you're going to get? You're going to finally land here and you're going to go, oh, lo and behold, they never wanted it to be criminal anyways. Not for the mom, not for the dad. And by the way, can I just say something real fast? We don't talk about this enough. It hit me this morning. I was rolling the trash out to the street and it just, light bulb came on and I went, oh my goodness, we need to talk about this more to make sure people hear us. When we say don't acquit the guilty and the mom is also guilty, Mm -hmm. of murder, right? Because that's what God's law would mm -hmm. say. Um, I hope that everyone understands from our perspective as a church, when you hear us saying it has to be equal justice, there has to be penalties, that's the only way God is glorified and honored, that's the only way there's real justice. I hope everyone understands that actually we think the first and foremost culprit, in most cases, because some dads don't even know what's happening, the first and foremost culprit and guilty party in this issue at the start is the dad. Mm -hmm. Is the dad. Yeah. Right? It's a fatherless child. It's a fatherless child. So, you know, I know that there are instances where, like, the mother gets pregnant and she goes and does this off on her own. He never knows. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones most common where they both know and they make that decision together. And we're watching the dad drive the mom exactly up to the right. door, drive off blasting music and eating tacos and returning in an hour and a half to come pick up his wobbling wife or girlfriend. Yeah. He is the first culprit and he's the one that I think bears the greater responsibility to begin with. Yeah. And they're both guilty. Yeah. But just understand, this isn't a matter of saying, let's go after the women. No, the issue is this, let's establish justice. Yeah. That's the issue, establish justice.